Welcome to WordWise, where we delve deeply in the Word of God, discover what it means, and how to apply it to our lives. Today we're continuing in 2 Timothy chapter 2, a powerful last letter from the Apostle Paul to his spiritual protege, Timothy. It's a powerful little message of encouragement and exhortation. Today we're continuing in chapter 2, verses 8 through 10. If you read with us the encouraging challenge from the Apostle Paul to Timothy and through the power of the Holy Spirit to us today as well. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 8 through 10. Always remember that Jesus Christ, a descendant of King David, was raised from the dead. This is the good news I preach. And because I preach this good news, I am suffering and have been chained like a criminal. But the word of God cannot be changed. I am willing to endure anything if it will bring salvation and eternal glory in Christ Jesus to those God has chosen. So as always, context is key, and the Apostle Paul in this context has been just sharing with Timothy the exhortation to be obedient, to keep the focus and to be obedient to what God calls you to do. Earlier, he had talked about the uh, the athlete that competes according to the rules, the hardworking farmer that follows the, the laws of nature that he needs to, to, to plant and to harvest. And he's talked about the good soldier serving fully devoted and focused on obeying his commanding officer and and, come and staying focused on what he should be doing. That reality has one more example that Paul wants to bring to Timothy's attention. It's the most powerful example of obedience and focus that we could possibly have. It's the example of Jesus. And Paul saying, always remember Jesus. When, whenever you're uh, looking at your life and your faith and you're walking uh, through this amazing life that we've been given in Christ, it's all about Jesus. It always has been and always will be and always should be about Jesus. So Paul's saying, when it comes to following an example, Jesus Christ is your ultimate example. Obedience. Philippians 2 told us that Jesus was obedient even to death, death on a cross, and that he stayed so focused on the will of the Father and following that will that he was willing to go even to a horrific death, sacrificial death on the cross. So Paul is reminding Timothy of that. Always remember Jesus Christ. But notice what he says. He goes, always remember Jesus Christ, the two natures of Jesus Christ fully human, descendant from David, that he was in the line, the royal line of David, and could trace his lineage back to David. That's, that's the idea of him being fully human and, and a fulfillment of the prophecy that Messiah would come from the line of David, and fully divine. He's raised from the dead. He's not just, uh, just not anybody who's raised from the dead. If you remember, there were resurrections that happened in the ministries of Elijah and Elisha in the Old Testament, the ministry of Jesus, but those were people raised back to physical life, just restored to a physical life where they would die again. Jesus is the first and only so far to be raised in a glorified body, to be raised in a divine way where there's this incredible power that's been used to raise him into uh, an amazing glorified form. And that's what Paul's saying is Jesus is fully God and fully human and his example of obedience and focus is the only way we can obey is through the power God gives us by our belief in him, our our allegiance to him. Paul's saying this is the good news. This is what it's all about. The resurrection is really what powers the Christian faith, the Christian hope. Yes, Christmas is very delightful and the amazing incarnation of Jesus is something we need to talk about, but Easter, Resurrection Day, is really what it's all about. So Paul's saying remember the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Yes, Jesus is your example for obedience and to follow and to keep that focus But the only way that's possible now for you is because of the resurrection. And that good news is what Paul has been preaching and sharing with others. That's why he's in trouble. That's why he sits in a prison, chained in Rome. That's why he's an imperial prisoner about to face his his death. It will soon be his time to be martyred, is what he's probably thinking. And he is chained like a criminal. That word criminal is only used three times in the New Testament. The other two references are in Luke chapter 23 about the, the two that were crucified with Jesus. That word is a very specific word where Paul's saying, it's not like I'm just being treated, maybe treated a little slightly uncomfortably, or maybe just treated bad in some ways, or being denied a few benefits. No, that's not the reality. He's being treated like a criminal who did nothing, uh, who, who deserves his punishment. But in Paul's case, he did nothing to deserve this. But yet he's chained like a criminal But he doesn't focus on that. Notice it's not, oh, woe is me, or self-pity, or he doesn't go off into that at all. He just mentions it as just this little side fact. Oh, yeah, because I shared the good news, because I'm preaching the gospel, because I'm talking about Jesus and resurrection of Jesus and the, the life that's possible through Jesus, because of that, I am chained like a criminal. But more importantly, always more importantly, the word of God is not chained. Paul's saying, even if I'm unable to get out of this prison, even if I'm facing my death, 
I know that the Word of God is not changed, that the Word of God will continue to bear fruit, that the Word of God is going forth throughout the world and will, uh, will be amazingly powerful to bring hope to people, to bring healing to people. That's what Paul's saying. The Word of God is not changed, despite the efforts of humans over and over again to stamp out the gospel, to eliminate the gospel. Instead, the church has grown to billions upon billions. Every government that has tried has failed. Every individual that has tried has failed. Because the gospel is that powerful. God's good news is going to go forth regardless of the efforts of humans. But notice what Paul says in verse 10. He said, that's why I've been doing what I can do, all I can do, because I know how amazing this gospel is and I want to get that word out to people. So I've lived my life to get this word out. I've done all I could to get the word out so that people can be saved, so that those that God has chosen will come to know Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. And he's done his ultimate. He's done his ultimate to the point where he cannot do much more. Even in prison, he's been writing letters and sharing the gospel as best he can. But nothing has prevented him. Even the beatings he received, the persecution he received, the the, the many times he faced death and went through very difficult times, none of that would stop him from sharing the good news. So brothers and sisters, I ask you a hard question. I ask myself every day, what's preventing me from sharing the good news? Because so often I'm not facing those same kind of things that Paul had to face or so many others have had to face. I'm facing things like my own fear, my own passivity, my own laziness at times, my own busyness, my own schedule, my own overly committed self. And so often I think we miss opportunities that, that God gives us to encourage others to share the good news because we're just too focused on what we've decided to do with our days and what we've decided to do with our time. So what prevents us from sharing the good news? I think a lot of times that's us that's preventing ourselves. It's, it's the reality of what we live. So often our busyness, our craziness to distract us from the realities of what's really important in this world. What's really important is to let people know the light that's in you is there for a reason, and that reason is Jesus. And to talk about that, share about that, when you get the chance to encourage and serve someone, that's an amazing opportunity. So brothers and sisters, take this example today. Keep your focus on Jesus. Remember Jesus Christ, descendant of David, raised from the dead. That powerful Lord is your Lord and Savior and friend. And today, he'll give you what you need to live for him, to live a light in the darkness, and to possibly influence someone else with the love of Jesus today and extend the grace that God has given you to another. So thanks for joining us. Continue to be WordWise.